I'm Deanne Mealy. Welcome to my studio, Deanne's Art Studio in Historic Decatur, Alabama. I received a lot of compliments regarding my painting, how casual um, and impressionistic it is. Thank you so much. I've worked pretty hard at uh, trying to just become a little more impressionistic, loosen up my brush, not to paint quite as tight as I used to even three, four, five years ago. Uh, so I thought what I'd do is revisit a design today that I painted originally designed and painted about five years ago in 2012 and I taught this at a convention where I had a full class I had 35 students and I called the piece casual poppies so let me show you that piece um, this is it casual poppies now I do have lost and found edges um, I have faded you know some ghost like flowers it's on a wooden tavern board uh, prepped and sealed Heritage Multimedia Acrylics. I've been using Heritage Multimedia Acrylics uh, exclusively since uh, they were released several years ago. I'm prepped a board that I'm going to duplicate this on, but I'm going to duplicate it in a style, now my interpretation. And this board was prepped with medium white and sealer. I lightly sanded and then put a little more medium white. And while the medium white was wet, I went ahead and streaked in a little bit of a toned green and a little bit of a toned medium blue up in the sky just to go ahead and get some uh, movement a little bit uh, for underneath those poppies. Now, I'm going to start from the beginning and I'm going to move rather quickly. If you are new at painting and uh, you don't feel like you have to rush, please just pause me and uh, get caught up, do what you need to do, grab a cup of coffee, come back, I'll still be here for you. The only thing I want to remind you or suggest to you is that when you're painting and you're working on a composition, it's really easy to get bogged down working with one flower. And when you're working on one flower, the paint never gets time, never has the time to kind of dry up or get sticky, come to that point where um, we're able to really manipulate it and move it. It's much easier to work on an entire composition. So if you're doing a practice board even, my suggestion to you would be to prep out several poppies, several roses, several, pe several peonies, whatever it is, and move from one to the other to the other. This will give your design a chance to catch up with you, if you will, and uh, hopefully that'll make it a lot easier for you if you've been struggling a little bit with these wet and wet techniques. I'm going to slide this one over just a little bit off the camera and hopefully get this one um, in for you. I do have to tell you, I have added, are you ready? A palette cam. Yay! So now you'll be able to see my palette. I can switch over there and uh, show you some of the brush mixing and whatever I'm doing over on the palette. I do have some colors that are pre-mixed, um, orange. I have a, a toned yellow green and a couple other reds that I just pre-mixed so that I wouldn't have to brush mix those. And how that works is if you, I honestly believe that if you are a new painter and um, it is easier for you to um, uh, have some colors that are pre-mixed, if you will, that that's okay. Um, you really do need to work on brush mixing and the more you do it the easier it becomes but I know that it's very difficult to learn a new technique uh, study under a new instructor me um, and follow along with new um, new medium if you haven't used heritage multimedia acrylics before and painting with acrylics wet into wet that could be all new for you so it's okay I, cut yourself some slack you can't learn everything perfectly and grasp it all at one time it does take some practice and a little bit of experience so that's okay so if you want if you feel better pre-mixing a little bit of a tone dark red um, a tone medium red orange Orange is Hansa yellow and naphthol red light, you know, almost one to one or adjust it how you want, that's fine. The, on my palette though, let me identify the colors for you. I have red violet, which is the coolest color on my palette. Naphthol red light, which is another pure pigment. Here is that base orange, which is yellow and red, just like when you learned in kindergarten. This is yellow oxide. It is not part of the basic six with the uh, Heritage Multimedia Paint It Simply program but I really like that color and so I wanted to add it. I thought it might give us a little bit of a glow to our poppies if we use it at all. Hansa yellow of course is pure. This is the toned yellow green, pine green straight out of the tube. Um, I will tone that with burnt sienna. I love these two colors put together. Uh, red will tone green as green will tone red since they're complements so it's nice to have those on your palette. 
I have carbon black, titanium white. This is medium white, and this is just where I was doing some of that mixing when I was prepping the background for you so that we could have some of that done before uh, before we switched over to uh, paint the piece. So I have some of that work done for you. Now, let's get started, if we will. Um, I'm gonna try to get these poppies a little bit, maybe, you know, a similar design. Uh, these are called formal in composition in that they touch each other. Informal would be none of the elements of your composition are touching. So I'm gonna uh, just pull over a little bit of some tone dark red, tone medium red. My paints have been sitting out all night, so they're pretty sticky, very stiff, and I can just loosen them up with a little extender. I'm gonna take, I'm using a number 10 Fusion Flat. It's a watercolor brush, so it's a little bit softer. It does not uh, lift the paints and the paints are able to sit on top of each other. I'm going to loosely sketch an idea, loose, of where maybe I want these main poppies to be. Um, I'll put this guy right here and maybe I'll drop this one a little lower and put my centers. Now, I always caution my students not to start with their centers up too high. Start with them lower than what you anticipate, and that way uh, you won't end up with a poppy always like this, especially if you're just starting out or you're newer, a newer painter. That'll make it a lot easier for you. Uh, let's see. We also have a poppy that's uh, an impressionistic kind of turned down, not so open poppy. You're seeing the underside of him. We may make him a ghost poppy. We'll see. I have a ghost poppy kind of reaching up to the sky here and um, you know I can put that one in and we can adjust that. There is the stem coming into the back of it etc. So I'm just going to give myself an impression of with whatever's left on my brush what I want to have out there. There is also a little ghost one. I have this kind of close and I can line them up with the best of you. So. Uh, don't think that you can line everything up better than I can. I can do it. Uh, so maybe I'll just move this out since I see that that line is there. Take my finger and just kind of softly blend some of that red or whatever into the background. I'm going to come over and um, not really commit. I think I'll just do a little bit of a ghost something happening over here. I may move that up after a while. Now, I know that when you first start out and you're looking at this and I tell my students not to turn their pieces, but if you're more comfortable turning your piece the other way so that you can pull towards the growth point, that's fine. You can identify your growth point. That is where the stem kind of appears to come in. Now it actually comes in, um, say this is your poppy right here. It actually, you know, is coming in up under that center. All right, but if we've kind of tilted our poppy and we're cupping up, it's gonna appear that that stem is coming right here. Our job as artist is to create the illusion of dimension. So I'm gonna mark my uh, growth points and I'm gonna mark my growth point up there because this one, I want it to come into the back. Uh, down low, I'll probably have my growth point right here and this one doesn't really matter right now. Now, if you want to turn your piece, I'll turn it, make you feel more comfortable. Everybody's turning their pieces around now, right? Absolutely, go for it. Um, you'll have to eventually learn to paint if you become more casual if you kind of paint it in the direction that uh, you're viewing it, but that's okay. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this toned medium red and I'm just gonna tap in my background. It's not really showing up and I've got it a little too wet, so I'm going to tap in some toned dark red just to kind of sit my centers. I'm going to start from the back of this poppy I'm going to load and come in with some uh, toned medium reds, maybe a little dark red, whatever floats your boat. The idea is just, first of all, you're starting in a toned red, and I'm going to push that in and out, kind of finger painting. I'm kind of giving myself just some color assignment. I'm gonna do that to both of them at the same time because that's giving everything a little bit of time to uh, kind of sticky up and get to that right touch where I can stroke it with my brush. It also helps me work to keep my two flowers in perspective. Now, I am going to overlap these. They will overlap as they grow. My flowers always grow, and um, but that's okay. I'm gonna take some toned dark red and just push some shadow casually up into those flowers. Now, please note how I'm holding my brush. And one of the keys for you, maybe if you're having, if you're struggling a little bit trying to loosen up, might be that you need to change something. If you need to change something, it may be the type of brush you're using. It may be um, what kind of surface you're painting on. It also could be the type of brush you're using and how you hold the brush. So. 
we are do painting very loose. We're not going to want to choke up on our brush so that we have very tight pencil-like control. You want to back up and paint from the end right now so you're loose. If this isn't even enough to make you change, hold it overhanded and sketch in like this and it will change just change anything you can do to change the feel so that you're able to loosen up a little bit. And that's our goal. If you're um, interested in how I go about getting a more impressionistic style, that's what I had to do too. I had to um, start painting with my fingers more. I had to change my tools a little bit. So uh, by all means, do what you need to do in order to get yourself to loosen up. Now, down here on this poppy, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just give it some indication of the colors I'm using up in here. If you use a color or create a color, you definitely have to move it. You don't want to isolate it. But now, when I'm saying moving a color, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to have that same color, the same intensity. I could have a really bright orange here and move the orange in a more toned manner into it, like a rust, if you will, down in my other poppy. In the back of this now, I'm going to go ahead and switch over and I'm going to switch to having mixing on my palette a little bit of orange into some of this toned uh, medium red. Toned medium red actually has everything that the orange has in it. My paints are a little sticky and if ever you're a little sticky, you can reach over and get a little extender. The key is a little. Don't overdo it or you'll have soupy uh, paints out over your piece and you don't want everything running and having everything moving everywhere. We want to be in control. So if I keep my paints a little thicker, a little stiffer, I am actually in control of them. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to just put a little bit of that orange. Now if that orange is not showing up, you may have to come in and just load your brush. It's a dirty brush, I'm not cleaning it, just in some, um, some of that orange straight off your palette so you can get a little intensity because everything we're doing because our colors are wet they're melting into each other as we layer them on so be aware of that okay so when you're layering your paint on it's going to melt into what you're using now I'm thinking that my focal area my highlight lights may come up through here if the light source really starts uh, giving you a little too much to think about if that's too much for you to think about don't worry with it uh, just follow along and kind of get everything your focal area over where I'm having you monkey see monkey do a little bit of that while you're learning your lessons if you've painted for a little while and you completely understand what I'm talking about and you're not overwhelmed by all means let's work on um, establishing a light source now when I am moving my colors around, I am remembering what I used. I used the orange. Remember what I said? I want the orange. So I'm going to just add a little of that down here in this guy. I'm not adding a ton of it. I'm kind of keeping him a little more transparent as I'm moving around. I can also, now I'm going to turn it right side up so I can get in perspective with this little guy that's moved up here. Um, he's going to really fade away. I have my paint underneath. I'm working into a wet background. So I'm going to go ahead and live it a little dangerous. Um, that should be my motto in the studio. My students always tell me, you just need a sign that says live, it da live life dangerously. <laughs> because I'm always saying that, just go for it. Uh, it's just paint, it's not a big deal. You can fix it, uh, there's always a way to work around it. And sometimes just happy mistakes happen and you end up with a really, really beautiful painting. Um, you end up with a lot of pretty, pretty paintings along the way, so no worries. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and pull just a little bit of that dark toned red over that, and I'm just taking the residue, uh, residual paint that's on my brush after I've deposited everything and wiggling it around. Now, my stem is coming in from underneath, so right now if you want to take a dirty green, which is actually your black and yellow and kind of give yourself an idea where your stems are, you can do that right now. Um, sometimes we feel better when we're painting flowers if we have an idea, you know, how they're going to move up and how they're going to grow. Uh, this guy actually, I would say, has a bent or a broken stem. He's a heavy poppy. And I also did that to this one. Don't line those up straight across, so make sure you have that very casual and then pull your stems down. I'm going to add just a little bit more depth so I can see those stems. Uh, right now, I may just go ahead and wiggle my brush out here so that I get a little bit of grasses starting. Not a whole lot, no big deal. Just a little bit of movement while I've got the color in my brush. Uh, this guy may also, he might break. And if this guy stays, I think I got him a little low, so I may just kind of 
push him in and out and then just forget that he's there and draw some stems up through him. Maybe there's something uh, right there that's gonna break. This is all can be changed later, but I'm just kind of getting some movement and some ideas what I'm doing. It also helps my eye move through the piece. And while I'm doing this, it's twofold. I have a little bit of benefit in that my uh, painting, my paints on my flowers is starting to uh, stiffen up just a little bit. So that's gonna be really helpful. I see that I need to probably consider doing a little bit of orange. I'm gonna use a toned orange, just means that it's orange with a little bit of that base brown. And remember base brown, uh, when we're using Heritage Multimedia Acrylics, base brown is naphthol red light and black. Um, and you get a brown that really, depending on how much red you put into it, it uh, can lean towards a very red. So you, you, that gives you a jumping off point. You can actually add some yellows to it, a toned yellow. Uh, you could add a little bit of phthalo blue to it if you'd like and blue it up or give it a green undertone. So when you have, create a base brown, you are able to um, adjust it to what you need. So it doesn't have to be you know, that perfect color or anything. Um, now I'm looking at this and of course, you know, in true fashion, if you can see this right now, I've lined that baby up straight up to the center of the plaque. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. All rules are made to be broken, right? So, but I'm gonna feel more comfortable if I just kind of alter the way this guy's leaning. And so I'm gonna push him heavy to one side and I'm gonna bend the stem just a little bit, just to remind me to keep trying to turn him a little bit so I don't just point like an arrow straight off of my piece. Um, I'm gonna take a little, let me just give myself a little more guideline. I, I told you I can do the same thing that you little guys do uh, when you're painting, I can do the same thing. I've just probably done it more and more than you so I can make those little uh, compositional errors, if you will, I can make them even better. So I've perfected the art of compositional errors. But really, again, you know, rules are made to be broken. So it's art. It's however you're feeling or whatever you're doing and producing that day. So I'm going to turn it back over for you. If at any time uh, you have your brush has got a lot of green in it and you're gonna go back into reds and orange. Remember, green is a the complement of red. I'll take and dip my brush over into a little extender. I always have like a little, I love my ant, local antique shops. Um, I'll have my local antique shops and I have these uh, little glass cellars or some sort of salt cellar or candle holder and I just keep a little extender there. Um, it makes my painting table pretty if I ever clean my painting table up, right? Um, so I'll dip into extender, I'll work it into my brush, and then I'm just gonna lightly uh, squeeze it just to kind of get a little of that red, that green out so that it doesn't completely tone my reds that I'm looking for. Now, I told you my paint was sitting out all night. So that red, I'm going into naphthol red light. Um, I, you guys who know me know I love red. I'm gonna tone it though, just, I picked up just a little bit of that tone dark red. So let me switch back over to the down camera. Uh, I'm gonna pick up a little red. I may thicken it up just a little bit because thick sticks to thin. And I'm thinking I just want to red my, uh, give a little bit of red to my uh, poppies here. And if your color is sinking into the color under it, uh, just reload your brush with a little thicker. When you reload, you need to lighten your touch because we're doing this um, painting thick over thin, fat over lean. So at each layer becomes a little thicker, each layer becomes um, a, a little fatter, if you will, just like you would paint uh, maybe in oils. A lot of uh, my students, some of them who have painted in oils before, they say that, that yeah, that's how they learned is, you know, uh, fat over lean. So I'm gonna go ahead, remember what I said about if you create a color and you use it, you gotta move it. Now you don't necessarily have to move it in the same opacity or in the same uh, intensity. Intensity is how bright or dull something is and uh, value, if you remember, uh, value is gonna be how light or dark something is. So uh, you wanna make sure the lighter you get that you occupy less space, and the darker you get, you occupy less less space. But we do have to have darks to see lights, and we'll be covering a lot of this um, as we move along in our journey together and on different pieces. And at any time, remember, I am talking quick. I've had a I've had a lot of caffeine today. <laughs> Those who know me know I drink quite a bit of caffeine. But also, uh, I'm trying to squeeze this in in a shorter period of time. You can pause it. 
go back. And if you have any questions about color mixing, I have been putting tidbits, um, YouTube videos down on one of those playlists down there. I think it says color techniques, color mixing techniques, and I'm covering how to mix different colors in your palette, how to brush mix them, etc. So if you need any extra help with that, by all means, go back and uh, pull up that video and watch that and that'll help you hopefully. And if you have any questions, by all means, you can uh, email me at dnsartstudio at aol.com and that is also that's going to be on my youtube and also on my website so no worries now i'm looking at this and i know i'm going to turn it again because i really i tend to paint right side up but there is nothing very bright up here and i've gotten these poppies are a little bit brighter uh now it doesn't mean that i have I have to have this so much as bright as that but i do need to carry the red so i guess what i meant to say is i i just really need to carry my color. So I'm just gonna kinda move my brush in and out and give myself that idea that there's, you know, uh, the back of a poppy. If you're having trouble remembering that you're gonna put that center up in here, you can put your uh, stems, reestate your stems at any point in time, just so you remember, so it's, that's not a problem at all. Now, now we have to move back to this, the lower poppy, the lower petals of these poppies and what I've set myself up to do is kind of cupping, cupping the poppy up, that front petal. So these petals here, when you're looking at it, they're kind of cupped up. I'm going to go in and do the same exact thing uh, with the same colors pretty much that I did already to the back. So the same color sequences. I'm going to go into a toned medium red. Um, I'm pulling towards my growth point though. That's uh, Make sure you're pulling towards your growth point which really is, you know, as we had said before, is up under um, that center, but we're representing it there on the outside. I'm gonna slide in just a little like casual brushwork to uh, maybe give myself the idea that there's some drop petals there. I'm not worried about the stems. I'm not worried about the other flower. I'm just kind of establishing my flower. Um, I'm gonna come in now, I think I will come in with some orange, and if you're orange, my orange and my secondary colors tend to get a little dirty, but you can go into some fresh color. If I'm thinking that my uh, highlight or my uh, focal area light source is coming up this way, I may want some of my brightest of oranges over towards this side. That doesn't mean that I don't wanna carry them over to the other side at all. Uh, don't forget, you can work both of these flowers at the same time. So I'm going to go back into maybe my toned medium red, and I'm going to really open that up because I really want this guy to touch. So I told you I would grow my flowers as I'm working on them. Uh, and maybe, let's see, maybe I'll cup him down, and then I'm going to take and cup this one up if that makes sense. So I'm trying to give just a little bit different look to that guy. Let me shadow the base of it. I can take some um, red violet and just kind of cup that up and you'll see the bottom of that flower. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and take that red violet. Red violet's the coolest color. So once you cool something, it's much more difficult to start warming it back up. So keep that in mind. Don't over cool it. It can be warmed back up, but it is it takes a little bit of work. So uh, you do wanna try to keep that in mind. Keep it as warm. That's why I tend to especially teach starting as warm as I possibly can, keeping you as a student uh, in your colors very warm until we're ready to cool them. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of tap in a little bit of that red violet into these two centers. And I can even push it up into my center, pull it back with my finger. Your fingers are great. That's a free tool you have right there. Um, I'm gonna move it back and forth and back and forth. Now, there is another thing. Uh, a lot of students and a lot of painters actually have an issue with over blending. So if you're one of those who, say I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put, let me do this for you. I'm gonna put some orange over here on um, this other poppy. And when I go in to put that orange, uh, I'm lightening and brightening mine a little bit. Say I'm gonna come in here with some, some of this orange, again, yellowed up. And I put in and I keep moving back and forth and back and forth. All I'm doing is I'm actually over blending that color. So if you are one of those uh, career over blenders, it's a, maybe it would help you a good technique. A good technique for you might be to consider striking in your color and then moving twice and then you're out. Pinch wipe, reload, and then go back down to your piece, okay? So if you are one of those um, who you, you can have too much pressure, maybe you put a lot of pressure on your brush and it blends all your colors together, 
or you just like to sit there and work it, work it to death until you have all one color, um, you need to go in, pr just try this technique and see if it helps you. Go in and strike your color and pull twice. So it's one, two, three, you're out. Your color has the most, your pigments have the most power, your brush has the most power the first time it hits that surface. So every time you move back and forth, you're losing the power of that strike of color. So keep that in mind. So see if that might help you if you've been um, painting everything samey samey and everything blends down and looks the same and you're trying to figure out, oh my goodness, it's a habit. Well, if you've been painting that way for quite a while, you know, habits are really hard to break. So sometimes we have to just kind of figure out a way to retrain your brain so that it controls everything a little different. Now, I'm going to come in with a little bit of this yellow orange and I'm going to kiss it right there on that poppy, that other poppy. I want to come in, my colors are very wet, so I'm going to have to leave these here in a second and move on to something else because everything is kind of, I need to let them get to this right amount of sticky. Uh, there's another thing when I, I like to transition my petals just a little bit um, on my poppy, and I may not have to even do it on a couple of these because they're much more casual. But if you look like your poppy is closing up, uh, or you don't have that transition from the back petals pulling to the center and then these petals pulling down, you can do what I like to refer to as just like a little S curve. And I'll go in and establish that. You don't want to do it on both sides, but you can go in and just kind of draw yourself a, like a backward C and down or a, a C and down. So it's kind of like creating an S. So around and down. And then that way it kind of gives you the your brain learns that, oh, that's my transition. So everything is going to be from here pulling in and everything here is pulling down to that uh, growth point. So if you are one of those who's struggling with that a little bit, that see if that might help you, okay? I'm getting a glare, so I'm moving all around. If you hear my chair moving, I apologize about that. Um, I'm gonna tap in some more of my red violet in my center, and I'm also gonna move that over on the other one and just move it around a little bit. I'm really liking the way these are turning out. Now, I wanna take some of this orange. I see that I could probably use a little more orange and I'm lightening my touch. As you go down and you're putting paint over paint, I take, tell my students all the time, and I don't have your hand here to do this, whisper, 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 lighten your touch and whisper. So you might wanna just lightly wisp your paint onto over the other layer. Now, it's very important that you learn to use your tools. All right, now, like I said, this is a Fusion 10 flat, very soft brush. This is the chisel edge of that brush, okay? This is where, you know, everything comes together, right? Kind of at a point. My chisels aren't as chiseled as a new, brand new brush because they really get a lot of work. But if you paint up on this chisel edge with a lot of pressure, I always tell my students, think of this as a ballet toe. So if I'm up on point, okay, I'm up on point, Alrighty, I'll angle it so you can see. And I put a lot of pressure there. That is where I have the most um, power on this brush to lift or to place, okay? So if I place really hard with a lot of pressure on that point onto wet paint, I could dig off what I'm, what I'm trying to actually apply. So sometimes you wanna use the ball of your foot, ballerina's ball, she's up on the ball of her foot instead of on her point, and you wanna lighten your touch. Okay, so maybe if you think about that, it might help you. So sometimes we need to not use our tippy, 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 tip point, and we need to soften and use the ball of our foot, okay? Um, I'm going to turn this around on you again. So if you're one of those who's painting upside down and you're trying to keep up, I apologize, but, uh, and I have to tilt it up a little so I don't have a glare. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of this orange up to this guy. I'm really liking the way he's turning out. Um, Let's see what else we can work on while we're letting this kind of dry. You can come in. Uh, let me switch over to the palette cam. I love saying that. I have a palette cam. Uh, black and yellow in this brand, and I've covered that in some of the technique videos, but black and yellow make a really pretty olive green. So you can mix this over, brush mix it over on your palette. There's no reason to pre-mix it. You wanna have some variation. So I'm just brush mixing and it's right there by the orange. It doesn't matter. It's just gonna tone it a little bit. I don't want everything to be um, all one value or all one color anyway. So then I can come back over to my piece and I can start working uh, some of these stems a little more 
Now I have more of a yellow green, so I'm getting a little variation. And remember, variation is the key to interest. So you don't want to paint everything exactly the same. You actually want to make sure you have some interest. Um, when you're working on these grasses or given the impression of them, make sure you don't do everything straight up and down, soldiers in a row. Cross through, because, you know, things grow differently. So it's, you know, it'd be appropriate for you to cross some things through. Um, you can always smear them a little bit with your fingers, you know, whatever you need to do. I'm just looking for movement. I'm not looking for, obviously, some perfect grass happening down there. I can go, I'm going to go over and um, just darken my green uh, by picking up a little bit of that black. You can also adjust your greens to a blue-green. Uh, be very careful, though, because that's going to start cooling your green, and we're not uh, cooling everything yet. Uh, but you can so that you can take and add a little bit of phthalo and get a blue green from that same mix so that always looks kind of nice too I'm going to give the impression of leaves or uh, poppy leaves or grass calyxes um, grasses calyxes leaves just by wiggling around I don't want perfect leaves uh, this is going to really be about the color that's in these poppies and not really about the leaves thankfully right so you don't have to go paint perfect leaves um, up here, I'm going to go ahead and pull some greens onto my red as if it's kind of like a calyx or something underneath. Be careful not to make it look like a spider because we all know that I can do that really well. If you get a little too much or you're not happy with the way that that laid down, it looks pretty good, but I love to take color and just pull back over. So all I did was just take a little bit of that orange. I'm keeping that color. Let me lift that up for you. I'm keeping that color kind of over to that side, so um, establishing like you know, a little bit of intensity and lights coming through like that. Um, now I believe we're to the point where I can move back to my poppies. And I, the paint, I don't know if you can kind of see it. Let me hold it up. The paint is pretty thick. I've got some thickness happening there. I'm trying to see on the camera. And there's some ridges up on my edges and stuff. Thick paint, I love painting with some thick paint. You know, you gotta have paint to paint, right? Um, now, I'm thinking that I would like to try to go into this. I'm going to neutralize my brush like I told you. I'm going to go in with a little bit of this um, yellow oxide as my highlight. And when I load, I've kind of got my brush loaded on its tippy toe, okay, and also on the ball of its foot. So, that, so I have all the tool, everything I need as I come in. And I'm going to think about this... Um, I may test it on this guy first. So since he's out here and I can, uh, it's not a, wrong for me to go ahead where he's at in the composition to uh, continue to blend him a little bit. Uh, that's gonna work out really nice. Yellow oxide, beautiful, beautiful yellow. Um, you can buy that or you can mix and make, mix a yellow that's similar, but that one is a tubed color from Heritage Multimedia Acrylics. I'm going to come into the back first and I'm just going to deposit my paint, okay? Then I'm going to lightly pinch white because I might have picked up some red and reload on the ball of my foot. Push and pull. And I'm varying the pressure on my brush, okay? So I push and pull. So basically, I'm depositing the paint and I'm pushing and pulling it into position. I want to put some of this color on the front there and also over on this edge of this flower. And if you get down into your center, remember you're picking up violet and violet and yellow are complements. So even though it's red violet and it technically would be yellow green, you're picking up a yellow. So um, it's still gonna kind of tone, the purple is gonna tone that yellow, the red violet will tone that yellow. I want a little bit of it on this area. And I'm just going through and highlighting my petals to taste right now. Now I am gonna, they're gonna need more of a highlight here in a few minutes. So um, I'm gonna, I wanna make sure they're not striped. So if you feel like you have that, or if your piece is starting to get sticky enough, this is a synthetic and it's a number eight, Global Arts uh, Synthetic, number eight Filbert. This is a stiffer brush and as the paint starts to set up, um, and it gets a little sticky, you can move to a synthetic in order to move your paints around. So I can come in, now this is where my darks are, I can come in and just kind of lift, make sure you pinch white, lift, pinch white, and I can negative paint, or reverse paint rather, by lifting some of that color back out, and you get some beautiful streaks. And then if you wanna just lightly tickle it back down, you can get some a different effect completely. 
Um, let me do that again. So I can push, I'm lifting, and then I can take and kind of take this uh, synthetic and just kind of drag my color back down. Really, really gives you a nice effect. Now, I do want to come in and give myself a little more shadow on the base of this poppy, this guy here. I'm kind of cupping him around, and I also want to give a shadow here. And notice how careful I was not, okay? Uh, I feel like I need to re restate my shadow on that one down there. I don't need as much of a shadow here because he's kind of fading away, but I'm going to be very careful as to where. I don't want to put the shadow so that all of a sudden my poppy starts pointing straight up in the sky, straight up off my board again. So I'm being cognizant of that as I'm painting. Um, the drop petals, I think I want to establish that a little better right through here. So I'm just going to pull some oranges and dirty orange on my brush and just kind of blend back and forth. And then I am going to set that shadow back in. Okay. And I reached out and just reached out there and kind of look how it cupped that uh, poppy. It just shadowed and cupped it right back up. Uh, I like that look. So I'm going to do that on this one. And I haven't even done anything to these petals over here. I do see a line. When I'm looking at what you're looking at on the monitor, I see a little bit of a line. So maybe I want to come in with a little bit of a dirty red and just kind of soften that naphthol red light right there. And if you feel like you softened it too much, you can always go back in and re-intensify it just a little bit by overstroking it. Remember, when you overstrike, you want to uh, lighten your touch very much so that you don't dig off what's underneath there. Now, I'm going to come in with um, some of this uh, yellow oxide. I feel like I need to intensify my, um, let me switch over to the palette cam. Palette cam. Uh, I feel like I need to intensify my um, highlights. I need to bring them up a little bit, not everywhere. And because I had a lot of red violet in my brush, I'm over here just kind of taking some extender and working it out just a little bit. This is, this is where that red violet was coming in, so it's really toning that yellow oxide. So I might reach over and get some fresh yellow oxide off my palette, and I'm going to take titanium white and work it, just brush mix a little of it there. You don't want to over mix it. You can have variation on your brush, so it's kind of a modeled effect. I have a lot of, you know, some different colors, variations of um, values of that yellow oxide happening right there on my brush. Now, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to pick where I want my highlights to go, and I'm trying to kind of keep the highlight more over in this area. So I'm going to strike in. That was three. For those of you who need to um, get out after three, um, I'm going to streak down into my centers. And then also, you don't want it to stop right there, so you may want to just lightly kiss some edges. And then if you get too much, you can always take your synthetic, and just kind of work it back and up and down just a little bit. And I have an angel, angel kiss touch. I'm telling you, it's very light, okay? Ooh, I love that red violet streaking right back up into that. I'm going to, I created this lighter value. I can't really isolate it on just that one area, all right? Just one area, one poppy. I need to move it. Um, I feel like I could take just a little bit of it on this uh, petal because that petal's kind of in front. So I'm going to do that. I need to brush mix a little more of my color um, and model it on my brush so everything's not exactly the same. Now you'll notice my paint um, is very, very thick. Okay, It's very, very thick that I have on there. Uh, you, If you haven't done this often, you may want to watch your thickness, but remember, uh, fat over lean, uh, thick over thin, and I'm going to pinch wipe that synthetic and I'm going to lift because I really like that effect. I'm going to lift and pull back and forth, okay? And I may want to, I think what would be really pretty, let me see if I have a different brush I can use so I don't get all in that one. Um, I'm going to pull some of this dark right up in there and neutralize my brush. You can pick up extender if you feel like everything's starting to separate on that brush. You can pick up extender. And I'm going to pull that back down so it's almost like my negative painting in the reverse and pull that back in. I love making all those colors kind of just let them kind of melt together and create that highlight. I feel like I could come in now with more of a yellow oxide over here on this orange area where there is no highlight. Uh, I don't feel like it needs that white white because 
I don't want my highlight to cover the entire, I don't want it to turn into a very light yellow poppy. Okay, so I'm looking for just some interest right there in that focal area. Now that I've done all of that to that one, I need to do a little bit of highlighting and pull this guy into perspective as well. So I'm gonna start at the back and those back petals and I'm just gonna work just a little bit around. And I cannot even begin to tell you uh, how soft of a touch I am working with. And I felt like I got a little bit of a line there, so I just kind of pushed it out. You can deposit your paint, pinch wipe your brush, and just push back and forth. It's not really sticking, so that just tells me I'm not picking up enough paint. You do have to use paint to paint, so not a big deal. Just pick up a little more and go back at it. I'm gonna take this synthetic, and I am going to lift, and I'm gonna pull. I'm just I just really like that effect on this flower. And I'm gonna work it over this way, and I, can't even begin to tell you, I have such a light touch, it's unimaginable. If I could see every one of you on your hand and lightly stroke your hand, you would get, you, I would be able to explain it. But just trust me, if you think you're doing it light enough, get just a little lighter. Now, if that's too streaky for you, um, it's kind of an effect I like, but you can come over it as it starts to get a little sticky with that synthetic and just strike it just lightly and marry those colors together a little bit more. Now. I'm going to come in now with some more of that highlight color and I feel like this uh, poppy over here needs to have just a kiss of it just a little bit on its top edge so I'm putting just a little bit on its top edge okay so just a little bit and after I do that I'm very fond of this technique right at the moment so I'm going to take and I'm not going to get up on the tip of that because I'll just end up digging everything off. I have a very light touch and I'm going to push back and pull down into that uh, red violet. I can reestablish it now and then I have some more streaks so to me that looks really really pretty. Now that might be a tad too light and if it is all you got to do you know you try it I'm going to set it down in the light. I could see how light it was. And I'll just come in and do it with just a little yellow. There we go. So that's coming out nice. I like that yellow over the light. So I'm going to come in now and do the same thing over on this guy. Because, you know, if you create it, do it, you need to move it. So you don't have to have anything samey samey, but you need to make sure that your composition goes together. And it doesn't mean that when we're out in the garden we plant all our flowers exactly alike, but when you're creating a composition, your colors need to move, your intensities, your values, etc., need to move. I'm gonna come into this one down here and I'm gonna just add just a little bit of highlight to it. If I get it too light, I'm gonna leave it at the moment until I turn it right side up so I can really evaluate it, okay? Because um, in the camera lights, I'm having a hard time seeing exactly what those light, the values are and the intensity. So let's turn it right side up. Ooh, we're starting to get a really pretty composition. I feel like some of these lights need to occur up in uh, this guy. Again, if I do everything right like this, I'm going to point my uh, poppy straight up. So I'm going to really work hard to try to keep myself from doing that. Um, like I said, the, those... Uh, Compositional and design errors are not unique to just you. We've all been there and we all do them and some of us like to still do them, okay? So it's just a thing we do. It's just, you know, right brain, left brain. Sometimes we want to see samey, samey. Sometimes we want to see it straight up. Um, and sometimes you don't even catch it until you've varnished. And then you're like, oh my goodness, look at that. And sometimes you may never. Doesn't mean it's not right. It doesn't mean it's not pretty. So we don't get too hung up on it. But since I noticed it, I'm gonna to try to be aware of it since I, uh, and trying to set a good example, right? Now, I am working that guy a little bit too much, so I'm gonna come in with this uh, same idea and soften with this uh, synthetic brush. And I'm, again, using that uh, Filbert number eight synthetic. And I'm gonna come in again with some of the yellow oxide without the white in it and strike right over it. I just really think that gives a really beautiful look. I picked up some of that purple, but that's kind of pretty. So I think uh, now that I'm looking at it, I think I'm about ready to put centers in. You may be looking here and you see some holidays with the background showing through. Those don't bother me at all. It's not like it's raw canvas that's showing through or anything. 
Um, while I'm letting that set up a little, I can come in with some of my greens. Let me switch over. I can come back in with some of my greens and um, come back in and restate some of my uh, stems while I'm, I couldn't think what they were called. But I'm going to switch over and add some phthalo blue to this so that I'm cooling it a little bit. And then I'll come back over to my um, stems and I'm not going to let these cools, you know, I'm not going to repeat them everywhere. You kind of have a what you would think might be a shadow area. Shadow area to me is probably occurring down where the flowers are kind of over everything and they're casting a little bit of a shadow. I can look for a little bit up in that area. Um, give you some variation on some of your stems, which is fine. Just a variation. You can take and move and uh, draw some of this through. Cross it over, give it a little variation. Variation is the key to interest, so don't forget that. It doesn't have to all look the same. Now, I do like to take this base brown, which is uh, the naphtha red light in black, and give myself a little bit of depth. And if you get too much, it's okay. That one looks a little dark to me. So what I'll do with that is I'll just come in with a lighter green. There is this, let me show it to you again. There is this toned yellow green mix. Um, it is basically a uh, base green, very little brown, and then a lot of Hansa yellow, okay? And a base green is made with phthalo and uh, Hansa yellow. So I'm gonna come in with it and give myself just a little bit here and there of this yellow green. To me, the Hansa, I mean the um, yellow oxide that's occurring in the piece is what's gonna allow me to really pop these greens into a yellow green here and there. Uh, if you get too much, you know, it's not a big deal. You just you can take it right back out. You can kiss it back. Um, you can come in and highlight your stems. Any of your dirty greens, um, gosh, that black with the yellow and add a little bit of white to it or warm white. If it doesn't show up, you can add, that one didn't show up at all, did it? I can add just a little bit more white to it. I don't want too much. So if I strike in, I tend to overstate and then I will just come right back in, right back in, and I will um, kiss it back a little bit so that I keep it. So I'll keep some of it. I don't want it striped though, so I'll keep some of it and then kiss it back, okay? So just kiss it back with some of your other color. If you feel like you got too much of that yellow green or you lost something coming into the back of those um, puppies, that's no big deal. Just take and go back to your other green. Uh, I think a calyx or some kind of greenery. I just think my greenery needs to marry up a little bit with this one. So I'm going to really do my little casual dance here with my brush. I'm using uh, black and yellow and whatever's dirty on my brush, which is probably a lot of different reds. If I start losing that green color, I will just pick up a little more yellow uh, and black into my brush. Let me show you that. Looks awesome. You should see it. Uh, I pick up a little, see how intense that is. So that's just because I'm just kind of mushing in some more yellows and greens and I'm really modeling them on my brush. So uh, there's no definite, you know, one value of a green or one type of green on my brush right now. And um, I'm going to come into that piece. Sorry, I keep hitting some sort of button there when I'm switching cameras. Um, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to Use this color here and there on my calyxes, on my poppies, maybe down here to dirty that up a little if it's bothering you. Looks like I got a yellow, I'm dragging a yellow goober, so I'll just remove that with my finger. Yellow looks kind of pretty in there. Um, whatever you'd like to do, you know, if you want to scribble it out, casual brush stroke it out, uh, you can do that. I just really don't want that my piece to be all about what's happening down here and it looks much more intense on the camera than it actually is so now let's go to these centers okay so I'm gonna flip this back over and um, I'm gonna go to the centers now the centers I'm gonna come in first with some of this base brown and I'm gonna have a corner load and what I'm gonna do it and let me see if I can hold that up so you can really see it there see it's on the corner a little bead and I'm going to keep this just kind of in one area. Don't put it everywhere, okay? It's kind of like your shadow in your center. Let me hold that up. Can you see that right there? It's kind of like your shadow. Got a little glare from my wet paint, but my shadow in my center. I'm going to add that to both of them. 
and you just don't want to put it everywhere so and if you get too much you can come back in with your red violet it's not a problem you can go back and forth a hundred times we're all good at that I think uh, I'm gonna come back in with my red violet and I'm gonna put that right there in the area you know to take that back a little I also want to use a little bit of black just because I want some contrast so I'm gonna take my black and I'm gonna tap it in and if you got, I got that up in there. I don't really think I wanted that up that high. Sometimes I'll take some up and just let some of those centers look like they exploded just a little bit, uh, just for effect. And to me, sometimes it softens my petals. I am not using a stylus now, notice, and none of my dots are real perfect. All I'm doing is coming in with that little corner and I'm dribbling and dizzle, you know, dribble, dizzling. I'm dizzling, yes. I'm dribbling some color in there. So, um, we don't need to dip dot and we don't need to use the back end of our brush or anything so that we have uh you know little drops of um perfect little stylus uh dip dots in our centers okay so we want to be more casual uh i'm going to come in i love to come in with this uh yellow green that i was telling you about that is a pre-mix and that yellow green will just give you bring some of the greens up into your poppies so i'm going to just kind of swirl Okay, in one area, uh, I'm gonna do that to both of them and I'm kind of keeping it a little on the highlight side, but you don't want it half and half. So you do wanna like marry it over, you know, and let it kind of drag over to the other side. If you get too much again, you can come in and tap some of it back with your, uh, I would go with the red violet because that's your coolest color on your palette and it really looks nice when we start getting into the centers okay now it looks like I might have a little bit of a line there so all I'm gonna do it just means that I got a little square um, so I'm just gonna take this synthetic and I'm just gonna wipe in and push those centers back I'm gonna come in with a little bit of my yellow oxide and lightly strike back in there we go. And those are some of those things that people go, oh, how did you do that? And it's like, well, whatever was there, I had to, I did a little fix and it never comes out exactly the same. And so you need to start, don't get uptight about things if it's not exactly like Deanne's, okay? It's okay. If it's not exactly like the photo that you're looking at or the lesson that you're taking, it's okay. It's all about you and your journey. And every time you paint, um, you're gonna paint a little differently and you may not paint exactly like me. You may not paint exactly like uh, the teacher. You may, um, I could paint this tomorrow and have a, very, a much more red day, which is surprising that these poppies are not red today uh, because I love red. Now, I did this and I feel like, I don't know, I'm gonna have to turn it right side up. I feel like I got very white right there. It kind of just fell off my brush and it's okay. I'm not gonna scoop everything back out. I'm just gonna take my uh, red violet. I'm sorry if my head gets in the shot and I'm just going to tap it back just a little bit. So there's a lot of texture in my center which is nice because you know that is the center focal area of my piece and that's where all of my texture should be. T texture adds uh, interest and the most interest should actually be you know where I want my viewers eye to go. Okay so there we have um, some good good starts on our um, poppies right there and a good start on this background. And I think we're almost there. Um, since I put those lights in, I'm thinking that the edges here and there of my poppy, um, cause I like to live life dangerously, my edges in places can be drizzled just a little lighter. Um, I'm not gonna start at the front. I'm just gonna tap here and there and pull lightly just to balance out that center. Um, just to give it just a little more and I can't even I, you should see how thick this paint is that I'm using the paint that I'm getting let me see if I can switch over to my uh, palette cam so you can see that and I'm gonna lift this up okay so I'm using this mix right here and it's a yellow uh, oxide with white and I have it very very sticky and I'm just kind of getting up to the bead so that let's see if the camera will focus right there getting up so that I have a very beaded edge on my um, on my brush. Let me try this camera so you can see. So you can see how thick that paint is. Um, if you need to tap it off, I don't want that big, there was like a big bubble or goober right there. I don't want that to fall onto my piece, but I'm also gonna strike in on the other side. I may not have it quite as light and that's okay. 
but I'm just trying to pull just a little more light into my um, focal area because I got this center so white and it just seemed like, oh, you know, I thought that everything was pretty highlighted and it wasn't. If you feel like your uh, whites, though, are still telling you you need your poppy to be white in order for balance, come back in with some of this butter yellow color and just tap over some of your white and kiss, kick it back so that it is more of a butter. And then some of that white is showing through. So I think that's going to work out really, really nice. Now, I'm going to turn it over, and I've got to tilt it up so I can evaluate it. Um, I may want to just lift a little that yellow bead came back on me. I'm going to lift just a little bit back out right here. And if I lift it too much, it may be just I can come in with thick red violet and just reestablish that shadow. So that worked out too. So that'll work. All right. So now I've got a very, um, try and tilt so you can see how thick the paint is. Um, I've got a very, um, not a toned piece at all. It's pretty intense. It looks brighter under the camera. So I'm going to evaluate now my background and see if there's any other movement I might want to have in this background before I call it a day. You do have this edge. This edge I would say is going to be um, probably in the tone dark red, which is uh, Napa red light, red violet, and a little bit of the base brown. Or um, if you are more on the green, a green fan, you want it to be a toned green. You want, as you move away from your focal area, everything should become more and more toned. Watch the contrast though. You don't want the value to be super dark or your eye will go to that contrast. So one way to eliminate some of the contrast is to come in and I'm looking at this thinking, well, do I want um, maybe some of my greens, green shadows at the bottom to be you know, a little bit more in shadow. So I can come in with my wide brush, just kind of loaded uh, with some toned green and extender. Now my toned green is actually um, my black and Hansa yellow. And I can come in here. I do like to sort of set my pieces back. So I'll often come in and just kind of do stuff right on the edges of it. So that's up to you. Um, you can definitely leave it without the toning of the background, but I really like to come in and just kind of mess with my background a little bit, tone it, um, tone my greens, carry some color, add some movement after I get my flowers in. If you think your flowers are too bright and you're wanting to kick them back, you can always drag some greens in and around them into them as well. Um, I use my finger just because I don't want a line right there. So there I can start, you know, kicking some greens into the background. Um, if you lose everything and you want to reestablish, you can do just a few very casuals. And I think mine were just too lined, so now that I have those a little more casual, it's okay. Uh, wide variations, that works, okay. I like that, so if I like it, I'm going to add some more of it. And I just have to tell myself to stop when I need to stop, because sometimes about a minute before you go, oh, I should have stopped. I'm guilty of that as well, no problem there. Um, I'll take a look at this. I may want to come around with a little bit of um, intensify my blue that is up and around my flowers a little bit just so it's more like the sky. It looks more intense on camera though, so it may not need that. Um, but you can come in. Let me switch over to the palette. Everything here is, you know, my painting happened. Now I kept everything kind of separated so you could see. I tend to, when I paint though, everything comes together and merks together and um, I don't usually keep my palette so organized, but so that you for the, so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to come in with white, and the original background color was this warm white, and I'm going to pick up some of that um, toned medium blue, and that's kind of the color that I was using up in the clouds, and I'll switch back over and up in the sky. So I may want to come in and just kind of streak in just a little bit of this color. And if it goes into the poppies, that's all fine. If my brush picks up a little bit of the poppy color, that's okay too, because it's just moving what is there. Um, you know, drag right through some of your poppy, okay? That's gonna be fine. Um, you're creating a little bit of an effect. I'll do the same thing up in this area and pull in. And I'm having to tilt my piece just because I'm getting a glare on it. So I'll pull that in 
Um, don't do everything exactly the same. So um, at some point I'll just go, okay, so that works. It kicks that sky around. But I also will come in and I want to angle it, angle it just a little bit, give myself some brush movement going back across. So I can lighten that color, lighten it, and then pull it across like this and give myself a little bit of highlight or I could actually pull it across this way. And you may get an effect of having some cross hatching or some um, uh, lattice work, any of that. It just adds some interest to your background and it also starts toning, marrying everything together, everything that you have going on, marrying that together. You can come in with a little bit darker blue if you want still intense and pop that through at the top go in the opposite direction okay that's gonna be kind of pretty at any time if you want to reestablish an edge of a poppy you can do that but I kind of like that when it starts um, just kind of dragging through I'm gonna lighten it again and go back this way so you can go back and forth doing a lot of things to this um, it's really hard to stop yourself sometimes. I'm guilty of it, so just remember don't overdo it. But uh, this just really kisses your background and your poppies and everything you're doing starts kind of bringing it together. And what a neat, neat way to go in and kind of tone everything down. Now, I'll have to let it start kind of setting up. Um, if you want, you can take and come in. I think that this piece could actually handle a little of it. Uh, coming in and just kind of moving my blue so that it's not just isolated in my sky. I can do a little bit of reflection into my flowers just a little bit, okay? And um, I'm really just kind of light, light touch. I've got a little bit of that toned blue um, off of my palette and I'm just kind of moving that color around. If you feel you need a little bit of stronger strikes of it here and there, you can do that. I might also feel like I might need to just kind of get a little too much. Um, again, you have to know when to stop, right? <laughs> uh, my finger had red on it, so I'm just going to take that brush and brush through that. And that just gives me the idea that I had something happening out in the background there. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I could come in and deepen the shadow down here. It needs to start kind of tacking up so that we're able to, uh, we're able to do that. But that's a basic, very casual flowers now. You can compare the two. Um, this one does look very bright, so I'll shoot a picture of it to use as a thumbnail. After I do the edges and all, I'll add that as well or just give you a thumbnail of this part of it. But uh, So there you have some casual poppies, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I obviously have way more casual brush than I had five years ago when I first did this. And the idea is you just got to relax as an artist and allow what's going to happen to happen. Use a little skill with it. That always helps, but it takes practice. Um, my brush tomorrow will not be like my brushes today. And thankfully, I hope to continue to grow. And um, I can go back and tighten my brush back up if I want to, but I'm really enjoying that impressionistic style. So as an artist, we just have to let some things go, let some things happen on the canvas. Uh, you must practice. It takes a little bit of practice. Put me on pause. I'm really, really grateful and thankful that you've come and joined me um, on this journey. If you haven't subscribed, push the button, it's right down there. Click subscribe so that you can keep up with all my latest uh, releases. I'll be doing some live lessons uh, starting next month and by the middle of June. And we will also be adding some simple downloads uh, for a minimal fees over on my website, deansartstudio.com. Uh, and um, you're invited to join us. You're invited to, I'll post all my lives and announce those. Uh, We'll also sign up for the newsletter. You can do that over on my website. So anyway, share this, um, paint with me, paint it again. Don't focus on one poppy. Don't focus on just one aspect of it. It's a whole, there's a lot to learning. And um, you know, just enjoy everything. One technique, one style, one day at a time. What's really important is that you paint with all the colors in your palette and you enjoy your journey. I'll see you next time here at Dan's Art Studio. Thank you.